try to contain myself because right. I don't want to be too loud because of where we are. No, Hallelujah. Right. But we serve a God, y'all. Yes, yes. Amen. For real, that is worthy hallelujah. of the praise. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. He's worthy of every hallelujah. Yes. He's worthy of every yes. glory yes. to him. Yes. Hallelujah. Had it not been for the Lord, yes. who was yes. on my side, my yes. yes. be too. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 You may take your seats because the longer you stand out, get excited. And get you want to scream. Yes. Help so go yourself. ahead and take your seat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Show up and show up. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I definitely have to blame senior pastor tonight for actually setting the tone for where we was actually going to go tonight through intercessory prayer. It's very important if we understand that a lot of words that he's speaking and the word that's come forth out of his mouth is very life to our very souls. Yes. And we will begin to just really grasp it. A lot of times we don't really see where we are going because we sometimes see that, okay, where we at the house where it's only four of us or whatever the case might be. And we have a few down in Orlando. Oh, yeah. But God is definitely yeah. up to something. Yes, he is. Yeah. And the Bible teaches us not to despise small beginnings. Yes, sir. Yes, and as we were, that's and as Pastor word. was beginning to be obedient, and he was even questioning it, even in himself, and in the times that we've had, God just, he just continue to stay the course and be obedient to what yes, God is doing. Yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's not my message, but I just wanted to get that out to my you. Man, As I mean, epic, understand, please understand that God is definitely under something. Yes, he is. And about a week ago when we was in intercessory prayer, I saw a cloud. And as the cloud began to anticipate the rain, and I saw the darkness of certain parts of the cloud, and I saw thunder, you know, the zigzag signs of mm -hmm. thunder, you know, the form of thunder. And the God says there's abundance of rain that's yeah. about to come to our lives. Thank Only you. if we would just stay the course and stay focused. And a lot of times, destruction is all around us. Yes, yes, yes. But God is definitely up to something. Hallelujah. Which comes to me to, to bring to you, would bring you to my subject tonight. Mm -hmm. And as I was really thought Pastor was really kidding, when he say, you know, you're going to bring the word of God. But I thank God for the for the push that He gives me. Because it only pushes me to stay in my word and stay on my face before God. Number one, that's a responsibility of mine because I'm who he has made me to be. And also, I am a minister and an elder of the Lord's church. Amen. So we also always have to be ready and prepared to, to, to deliver when God says deliver. Just as a singer that I am, I always have to be prepared. When we'll say, you got a song? Oh, yes, I got to be prepared. Be ye ready at all times. Amen. Bring you to my subject tonight. In the midst of it all. And as I was got home last night after elders class, Pastor had drained me so y'all in elders class because he he was pouring out so much revel, revelation to me. And a lot of times he said, "Elder, I just I, I I don't got nothing for that because I've committed that to prayer and I don't have anything. So unless the Lord give me something real time, I don't have nothing for you." But fortunately, God was giving him stuff for me real time last night Amen. and pouring out revelation. Yeah into my life to better understand who God has called me to be, yeah. to better understand, to, to identify every situation in my life. Thank you. And things happen for a purpose. Please understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Turn to me to Psalms 46. Oh, Psalms chapter 46. Oh, Hallelujah. Ah, and I'm going to skip around, so just follow me, and I'll let you know what verse I'm on. Verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength. Mm -hmm. yeah. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Verse 4 says, there is a river. Yes. The streams thereof make, shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Yeah. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right and that right early. Amen. Let's go with me to verse 10. The Bible says, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. Yeah. The Lord of hosts is with us. 
the God of Jacob is our refuge. Yes. I am in the midst of it all. Mm -hmm. The Bible instructs us, and I'm going to really focus on verse 10 here. The Bible says, be still. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we're faced with circumstances and we're faced with situations, things on our job, we always want to put our hands in it. We always want to get to working on plan B and get to try to making things work. But God is instructing us to be still. Mm -hmm. The word mist meaning the position of anything surrounded by other things. Mm -hmm. Personally, we would prefer not to have trouble. Mm -hmm. We don't want things to rise up against us. We don't want to be faced with adversity. Mm -hmm. But God hasn't promised us such a life. Amen. Rather, he has promised us to be with us in the midst of trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, understanding, and I'm going to jump real quick to my living principle because I think it fits perfectly here. Living principle number one, you are not exempt from suffering. You're not, you are not exempt from going through. Just because you came on, on the Lord's side and decided to give your life to the Lord, well, you are right. not exempt from going through. Yes, yeah. As a matter of fact, it's going to get even harder. Yeah. And a lot of times we question, well, God, I had it better when I was, you know, doing my own thing. Right. My finances were the way they were when I was doing my own thing. You are not exempt from anything. And as I was studying and meditating on the word of God, he brought me to the, to the, um, to the book of Daniel. Book of Daniel chapter 6, and it talks about Daniel in the lion's den. And we all know the story with the Sunday school, and we sat in the midst of our Sunday school teacher, Sister Loretta, and she taught us Sunday school. Amen? <laughs> and if we understand Daniel in the lion's den, he was put there for a purpose because there was a mandate on his life. Yes. Understand that we are put in situations because there's a mandate on our life. God wants to do something with us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we're put in situations to where we begin to question God, and begin to say, okay, God, why me? And we cry, right, woe is right, me. Right, right. But the Bible says in, in Psalms 46, be still. Yeah, yes, he also took me to Daniel chapter 3, where it talks about the three Hebrew, the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. Right. And understanding why they was put in the fiery furnace, because they had something to do. They wouldn't bow down or be, stop praying, but they was put in the fiery furnace for a purpose. Mm -hmm. God was making a point. When we go through, understand in our lives, there is a point that God wants to make in our lives. Yes, Living principle number two brings me to this point here. Your suffering isn't about you. What you go through, what you're being faced with, what you're being challenged with, it has nothing to do with you. Then the question arises, then why God am I going through what I'm going through? Right. If it's not about me, if it's not for me, or, or what I'm going through, so why am I going through right. The Bible, again, instructs us in Psalms 46, 10, be still. Yeah. There's a purpose for everything that we're faced with. There's a purpose for everything that we're going through in life. No, it's not for you, son, but it's for you to be able to testify yeah. and be a blessing yeah. to someone else. Amen. Understand that as we are an apostolic people, there are people that are waiting on us. There are yeah. people that our lives are assigned to that we have to meet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So simply... That you're going through, count it as a pleasure. Wow. And a lot of times, because we're in that situation, we're in that thing, we can't really count that as a pleasure or a good place to be in. Because we question, God, why us? It doesn't feel good. God, it's not supposed to be like this. Now, God, I know what you promised me. It don't quite look like what you promised me. Huh? touch on the past, but just let me give it just a little bit of jump. Raise it. <laughs> Pastor, I have to always submit what, what he always, okay, what the Lord that gave you. So I have to submit, so he told me not to, not to jump on this too much. But we all, we all know the story of Jonah, right? Jonah was given a task that Jonah felt like he could not do. That he was not equipped to do. But just like Jonah, and sometimes the vision that God has given us, we feel like, God, I am not capable of doing what you have called me to do. And I'm just going to say, don't be like Jonah, y'all. Don't be like Jonah to the point to where God has to force you 
to do what he has called you to do. Yes, sir. Believe it or not, there is no way of exit. Now, I do believe God has called and appointed us to do some things. Now, we continue to stay in our own way. He has another plan, right. and he'll place somebody else to do what he has called you to do. I'm going to leave that alone. Because yeah. Pastor, going to break that down in a couple weeks. Living principle number three, and I'm almost done. Be still and know that I am God. It doesn't matter what we're being faced with. It doesn't matter what situation we are in. It doesn't matter what is going on around us. It doesn't matter what the people are doing on the job. It doesn't matter what my wife is doing at home. It doesn't matter what our children may be doing. We have to understand that I have to be still and know that God is God. In every situation that I'm faced with, with everything that I'm going through, I have to be still and be instructed by the word of God. To let understand and to let me know that, son, I am in the midst of it all. Yes. And a lot of times I picture it as God is right in the midst of it all. And I see hell over here, hell over here, hell over there, hell over there. Me somewhere right there, hell, 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 all around. But God says, I am in the midst. Which means that says that I am in control over every circumstance, yeah. over every situation. So it doesn't matter what your emotions say. Wow. It doesn't matter what your feelings feel like. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the people on the job are doing. Yeah. It doesn't matter what's going on in your home. Mm -hmm. Please understand that I am in the midst of it all. In my closing, that took me to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And it reads as such. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above yeah. all that we can That's ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Let me pause there for a moment. Pastor yeah. preached on last Sunday that you got this. The word of God says, according to the power that worketh in us. It's already in you. You have already been equipped to get accomplished the assignment that is placed on your life. There is nothing too hard, nothing too small, nothing too great that God has given you that you cannot overcome and accomplish. Please know that the power is in you. Work your power. Amen. 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 We thank you for the word of God. If we can reach Hallelujah. our hands to Elder Satchel Evangelist, if you may place your hand on his head. Hallelujah. Father, we are asking for renewal of strength. We are asking for direction, guidance, clearing of the path. Father, we're thanking you for the vessel. We're thanking you for the man. We're thanking yes. you for the elder. But more importantly, yes. God, we're thanking you for your disciple, Elder Whitlock. God, continue to do your work on him. Refine him. Prune him. Uh, put, him in the, in the, put him in the furnace. Put him on the potter's wheel. Yes. So you might get the glory from his life, from his situation, and that when he utter the testimony on how he got over, that he will speak in a level of victory that someone else might be changed. God, restore him, fill him up now. Replenish his soul, close him up, so he may pray, so he might pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. We thank you so much for joining us tonight at Life Night. I hope you got your life because I got mine. God is in the midst of it all. And if I simply stand on his word and believe him, then all things are well. Yes. Amen. Join us again on Sunday when we are um, doing the encounter at 11 o'clock. You don't want to miss it. God bless you.